before we can dive into quantum mechanics and quantum computing, we need to cover some mathematical background. Fortunately, there's not very much that we need to cover. To understand most of quantum computing, the only math you need to know is linear algebra, which is the study of linear transformations, which is where its name comes from, and vectors, which is what we'll be talking about in this video. A vector is an abstract mathematical object in a lot of ways like a number is. But before we talk about the properties of vectors, I want to introduce some notation. So if we have a vector a, a just being a name for this particular vector, we denote that vector by placing its label, in this case, a, inside of two brackets. This is cleverly called bracket notation, or you'll sometimes hear it referred to as Dirac notation after Paul Dirac. Now this notation right now just gives us a convenient way to distinguish between numbers and vectors. If you see something inside of brackets, you immediately know it's a vector. Likewise, if something is outside of brackets, you know that's a number. Now this notation has many benefits beyond this simple one, but that's all we're using it for right now. And I want to emphasize that the thing that goes in between the brackets is just a label for a vector. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be a letter. It could be something like a smiley face. It could be something like a number even. And that doesn't mean that we're talking about a number, we're talking about vectors. Anytime you see these square brackets, you know we're talking about a vector. And the thing inside of them is just a label for a vector. That's all it is. Now, two vectors can be added to each other to give a third vector. So we have two vectors, A and B. We add those together, we get a new vector, C. And this vector addition obeys laws you're probably familiar with. One is commutativity. So it doesn't matter what order we add two vectors together, we get the same thing. So vector A plus vector B is the same thing as vector B plus vector A. Vectors can also be multiplied by numbers. So we can have the vector A being multiplied by the number A, and we end up with a new vector D. And multiplication and addition together also behave like you would expect them to. So if we add two vectors A and B together and multiply the resulting vector by the number A, well, that's the same thing as multiplying both the vectors a and b by the number a individually and adding the two resulting vectors together. This is known as distributivity. If you've studied vectors before, you've probably used a different notation than this one, and that's not terribly important. Notation is just a way to talk about something. <laughs> We're talking about vectors in both cases, even if we're using two different notations. Now, you may have also heard a characterization of vectors as things which have both magnitude and direction. And you may have visualized vectors as arrows in the plane or in some three-dimensional space. Now, this on the surface makes sense because arrows do behave a lot like how we've described vectors. Two arrows can be added together and produce a new arrow, and arrows can be multiplied by numbers to produce, yet again, more arrows. But I want to stress that this is just one particular vector space. This is a two- or three-dimensional vector space, and we'll talk more about what dimension means later. It's a vector space over the real numbers which means the numbers we multiply the vectors by have to be real. Now in quantum mechanics, the numbers are imaginary numbers. So this is one problem for thinking about vectors as arrows. What does it mean to multiply an arrow by a complex number? If we're talking about arrows in the plane, you can no longer visualize them as such. We need a four-dimensional space to visualize these new 
vectors scaled by imaginary numbers. And it's even worse in the case of three dimensions. Now you need six dimensions to think about your arrows. So while it's true that these arrows are an example of vectors, they're a specific type of vectors. They're Euclidean vectors. It's what they're officially called. And the vectors we'll be using in quantum mechanics are much more general. So it's probably best to abandon this notion as a vector being something with both magnitude and direction and to instead adopt this more abstract view towards vectors. Formally speaking, a vector space is nothing more than a collection of vectors with these two operations, addition and multiplication, that obeys eight axioms. And two of these we've already seen.